Welcome back to Pseudo Sergeant. In this segment, we're going to do some 3D design in a Linux-based environment. We're going to use a program called FreeCAD, and I'll show you how I made these knobs, these buttons, and this slider. Now let's take a look. I'll be designing with a program named FreeCAD. It's a multi-platform parametric 3D modeling program, and it supports many 3D formats. The program is still under heavy development, and it's not even reached release one. Uh, the version I'm using here is 0.17. FreeCAD is a great program, but it's not stable or reliable enough for production environments. For example, I'll try and start it, and here we go, it will immediately fail. I have to start with a special instruction. This is an environmental variable, libgl underscore dri3 underscore disable equals true, and then call FreeCAD, and it'll start. Now I'll start by saving the project as button underscore zero zero. This will be a large square button that I'll use for the sequence steps. With the complete workbench selected, I'll create a new sketch oriented to the XY plane. I'll create a rectangle of arbitrary dimension. Now I'll dimension one of the sides to 16 millimeters. With the dimension of one of the horizontal sides set, I can make the length of the vertical side the same, and then we'll have a square for the base of the button. Next, with the square created, I want to have it centered in the sketch. To do this, I'll select two corners that are diagonal from each other, and the center point of the sketch. With those two points selected, I'll create a symmetry constraint between the two points with respect to the third point, which is the center. This ensures that the square is centered on the sketch. At this point, I realized that version 0.17 is a little different than version 0.16. I didn't know what else had changed, so I messed around for about 20 minutes or so, noticing things not quite working as I was familiar with. In the interest of time, I wanted to go back to something that I understood. So I downgraded version 0.16 and started over. Again, in version 0.16, there's a problem with starting the program. It fails immediately, but the same fix works as before. That's setting the environmental variable libgl underscore dri3 underscore disable equals true, and then calling FreeCAD, and it works just fine. Starting over, I need to select the complete workbench. Then I can create and save the new project, same as last time, button underscore zero zero. Like before, I will create a sketch. In the sketch, I will create a 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter square centered in the sketch. I'll select this sketch and press F2 to give it a name. I like to name things to keep things in order. Let's name this one base 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter. Next, I'll pad the sketch two millimeters and name this feature as well. Okay, there's the shape for the base. Now on the top face of this, I'll create a new sketch. Then I'll pad that sketch upwards like I did the base. To do this, I'll select the top face of the shape and press the sketch button to create a sketch on it. In this sketch, I'll create a square just like before, except uh, the dimensions are gonna be 12.6 millimeter by 12.6 millimeter, smaller than 16 by 16 millimeter. I'll name this sketch stock 12.6 millimeter by 12.6 millimeter. With a new sketch selected, I'll click on the pad button again. This time I'll pad the sketch 10 millimeters and it will result in a new shape. I'll name the step stock pad 10 millimeters. The edges need to have a fillet. In order to do that, I need to select them. I can select them by changing the view mode to wireframe by going through the menu options, view, draw style, wireframe. This will make it easy for me to see the edges for selecting them and applying the fillet. Now I'm gonna select all the edges on the Z axis. Clicking on the fillet tool brings up the menu and I select a four millimeter radius. Let's change the drawing style to flat lines. I'm gonna name this feature edges fillet four millimeter. Then select the top face and create a two millimeter fillet. Okay, let's name it top fillet two millimeter. With the part complete, it can be exported for printing. So I'll open the file menu and select export. I choose STL, um, you can use whatever format you like. Now let's create a smaller button. The process of creating this button is the same as for button underscore zero zero with the difference of two dimensions. Here's a completed button for triggering the drum sounds. Okay, now time to create the knobs. This time I'll create a sketch with a circle centered in it. The circle needs to have a radius of 6.5 millimeters. 
I'll name it base circle 6.5 millimeter radius. Naming really helps keep track of all the different features in the steps. Next I'll pad the circle 18 millimeters and name it cylinder 18 millimeter tall 6.5 millimeter radius. I'll select the top and bottom faces of the cylinder and fill up the edges 2 millimeters. A name for this will be fillet top and bottom 2 millimeters. This part is more complex than the button, so I'm going to add groups to the design. I'll do this by right clicking on the project name and selecting create group. I'll name it cylinder, then move the features I just created into it. I want this knob to have a knurl around it, so I'm going to create another group named knurl. Now I'll select the bottom face of the feature named fill it top and bottom 2 millimeter and create a new sketch on it. For clarity, I will hide the features I just created and unhide the base circle 6.5 millimeter radius sketch. I'll toggle to construction mode and draw some construction lines. The goal here is to create a smaller circle for the neural crossing over the edge of the cylinder. I'll create a square with the bottom left corner centered in the sketch and I'll give the left edge of the dimension of 7 millimeters. This will give me a reference to center the new circle. I'll switch to drawing mode again and select the circle tool. Here I'll draw a circle. My plan was to constrain the center of the circle to the top left corner of the rectangle. For whatever reason, this does not work. Look at me struggle. As soon as I add the constraint, the circle disappears. So much for that. How about I delete the circle and remove the constraints, then create a new circle and constrain the center of the circle to the top left corner of the rectangle. Then constrain the bottom left corner of the rectangle to the center of the sketch, then assign the dimension of 7 millimeters to the rectangle side. Now the circle is where I want it. I'll give it a radius of 1 millimeter. This sketch should be named Neural Circle 1 millimeter Radius 7 millimeter from center. Now I'm going to add some knurling. I'll start by selecting the neural sketch and using it to make a pocket. Make the type option through all. Here's the new pocket. I'll name it neural cut through. Now I select the neural cut through and choose create a polar pattern feature from the toolbar. This brings up the dialog. I'll zoom out, pan, rotate, and enhance to get a view of what's going on. I'll increase the number of recurrences to 12. Click on OK. Cool, now we have a cylinder with grooves cut all the way around it. And of course, I give it a name so we know what it is and make sure that it's in the neural group. A feature I'd like this design to have is for the top of the knob to be concave. I'll create a new group named Dimple for this. I'll select our previous feature and create a simple copy of it, then bring it into the Dimple group. Now I'm going to create a sphere primitive to use for a subtraction to create the concave top. To do this, I'll make sure I'm in the Part Workbench, then select Part from the menu and choose Primitives, then Sphere. I need to adjust the placement. Nothing seems to be happening. If you notice, I'm adjusting the axis, not the position. It took me about a minute to realize I was changing the ROM parameter. I'll change the Z to 30.5 millimeters. Now I'll adjust the radius of the sphere to 13 millimeters. This will make it so that the sphere slightly intersects with the top of our knurled cylinder. First select the knurl, then the sphere. With them selected in that order, now apply cut. This action results in a concave indentation on the groove cylinder. Again, let's give this feature a name and create a simple copy. I create a new group named Fillet Top Sides and Bottom, then move the simple copy of Cut Sphere from Knob. For this step, select the concave top of the knob and choose Fillet from the toolbar. 7mm radius is ok. This feature deserves a name. How about Fillet Dimple? Next I can select the top and choose Fillet from the toolbar again. For this parameter, 1mm is fine. Oh look, there it is, a groovy knob with a dimple. I'll name this and then go to the next step. I'll create a copy of this feature, then I'll create a new group, I'll name it shaft, then put the copy into it. To make the shaft opening, I'll select the bottom and create a sketch on it. In the center of the sketch, I'll constrain a circle with a 3.16 millimeter radius. Where's the sketch? Oh, here it is. It's in the wrong group. Actually, it was created in the wrong feature. I'll have to delete it and redraw it. Okay, here's the new sketch. I'll give it a name. Okay, time to pocket the sketch. 14 millimeters should be fine. I'll give this a nice descriptive name and create a simple copy. I'll select the rim of the shaft opening and give it a chamfer. 0.5 millimeter will be fine. Let's have a look at this part. Looks great! Time to save and export the STL file for printing. I'll start by creating and saving the new file. I'll name this one slider 00. 
Zero, zero is just the convention I implement for assigning version numbers. Not a big deal. Use whatever you like. Now I'll create a sketch. In the sketch, I'll create an outline for the slider using the polyline tool. I'll start by arbitrarily making the general shape that I desire. Now, with all the necessary lines created, I'll start adding constraints to make it the right shape and size. I'll select lines that are supposed to be vertical and make sure they're all vertical. Then I'll constrain horizontal lines to be horizontal, of course. I'll also make opposing lines share the same length. Next, I'll start assigning dimensions. Here's the desired outline. Basically, it's a rectangle with a bump in the middle on the top and a bump in the middle on the bottom. I'll pad the sketch, then name the pad and the sketch. I'll switch to the wireframe view again so I can see the edges and I'll select them for the fillet. Six millimeters will be just fine, then I'll name this fillet and six millimeter. I'll select the corners of the nubs and fillet them 0.5 millimeter. That looks nice. The ends of the nubs should receive a fillet also. One millimeter will be great. Okay, I'll select the top and bottom faces of this piece and add a fillet. 0.995 millimeters will be fine. Here's a new group. I'll name it Slider Top and put these features into it. Now I'll create another group and name this one Neural. With the face of the side selected, I'll create a new sketch. This situation calls for creating edge link to the external geometry. The utility is available on the toolbar. I'll select this edge here and this edge here. And now I can create construction lines and constrain them to the edges of the shape. With the rectangle constrained to the edges of the piece, I can now create another set of construction lines. This set of construction lines will be used to determine the distance from the top left corner, in this case, two millimeters. Since I have that distance set, I can now create a circle to cut through the piece for a groove. I'll make the circle have a radius of 0.5 millimeter. How about I tweak the distance from the edge by changing it from two millimeters to 1.5 millimeters. I'll move the sketch to this new group and create a simple copy of the last fillet and name the sketch. Time to make a cut. For this, select Through All. This next step is interesting. I select the feature and choose Linear Pattern. 15 millimeters looks like the proper length. I'll set the occurrences to 6. That looks nice. I can select the faces of the grooves cut out from the linear pattern. With them selected, I can press fillet. There's a weird glitch here because the fillet radius is too high, so I just lower it to 0.5 millimeters and it works just fine. Per the usual steps, considering the instability of FreeCAD, I save the project and create a simple copy and put it into a new group. Okay, that's a nice looking slider. Now it needs a shaft to fit on the potentiometer. I'll select the bottom side and start a new sketch. Here I'll have a rectangle within a rectangle centered in the sketch. The new sketch is ready and I'll pad it 7.5 millimeters. I'll select the edges of the inner rectangle and chamfer them 0.5 millimeters. With the wireframe draw style, I can see the edges of the outer rectangle and easily select them. I'll give these lines a fillet of one millimeter. I can select the bottom face of the slider and give it a fillet. This will fill it around the rectangle of the base nicely. Now the slider is complete. It looks really nice. And there you have it, a basic introduction to 3D design in a Linux-based environment using FreeCAD. What sort of 3D design software do you use? Let us know in the comments at element14.com forward slash pseudosargent. And I'll see you on the command line. Have fun and stuff.